God bless you, my beloved. Thank you for joining us for our Wednesday night Bible study. Our topic today is all about having peace with your fellow brethren. The title is Maintaining Peace with One Another. This is part one. Our scripture is from Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 14. Follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. That's the King James Version. Now, the English Standard Version renders it, Strive for peace with everyone, and for the holiness without which no one will see the Lord. My beloved, the word peace is applied to our habits, pursuits, and dispositions, which are our natures and characters toward others. Each of the other types of peace is a rich blessing, mainly peace with God through Jesus Christ. This is a heavy duty to perform, and on this point, the scriptures are very clear and full. In Romans chapter 14 and verse 19, we read, So let's pursue those things which bring peace and which are good for each other. Galatians chapter 5 and verse 22 and 23 says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. Peace is part of the fruit of the Spirit and is to be practiced with every Christian. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 3 says, Do your best to preserve the unity which the Spirit gives by means of the peace that binds you together. That's from the Good News Bible. Beloved Christian, the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, and the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace among them that make peace. In Mark chapter 9 and verse 50, Jesus said, Salt is good, but if salt loses its taste, how will you restore its flavor? Have salt within you and live in peace with one another. That's from the God's Word version. Our Savior Jesus Christ told his disciples to have peace with one another so that there was not left the shadow of a doubt respecting the binding obligation upon all men to have and to manifest peaceable natures at all times. As Christians, we must allow all our endeavors to have peace to extend to all with whom we have dealings. This is inclusive of those in and out of the church of Jesus Christ. So as many Christians share peace, they share the love of Jesus Christ. Beloved, as Christians, what are we encouraged to do to maintain peace with our fellow men, you may ask? If we as Christians do not pursue peace with all men, especially in the body of Christ, we fail to fulfill our Christian calling and violate the spirit of of the gospel. Our speech is also to be helpful to the word of God so that we do not speak words that harm others or destroy our own image for Christ. Proverbs chapter 15 and verse 1 says, A gentle answer turns away rage, but a harsh word stirs up anger. That's from the God's Word version. Proverbs chapter 26 and verse 20 says, Without wood, a fire goes out, and without gossip, a quarrel dies down. That's from the God's Word version. As you can see, we as Christians are to speak in love and not harm anyone. We must think before we speak and let our words bless others instead of harming them. A little heart searching and even a little reflection before speaking to someone would effectually prevent a lot of misery and harm. So my beloved, allow your words to refresh others and not to damage them. Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 24 says, Some friendships do not last, but some friends are more loyal than brothers. That's from the Good News Bible. Where loyalty and love is present in a relationship, strife and anger cannot exist. For where there is no fuel, the fire cannot keep burning. So my beloved, one of the most serious hindrances to the peace of many men and many communities is found in occasional outbursts of bad temper. Some people are constitutionally moody. Their feelings vary with the wind, with the state of their stomachs, and with other fluctuating things. Others are nervous and are easily provoked to tears or to passion. Many from early infancy have had bad precepts and worse examples held up before them, and some are fretted and crossed in childhood and youth until they are like the trained cubs of a tiger. All this is 
to be greatly deplored. For Proverbs chapter 15 and verse 18 says, Hot tempers cause arguments, but patience brings peace. That's from the Good News Bible. Surely, the first outbursts of passion are often like coals thrown among shavings. There is no telling what will be the end of the mischief done. It would conduce to peace if men could be induced to guard against all causes, occasions, and the beginnings of discord. Proverbs chapter 17 and verse 14 says, The start of an argument is like the first break in a dam. Stop it before it goes any further. That's from the Good News Bible. Also, we are to not allow ourselves to be made a part of someone's disagreement, which does not concern us. Proverbs chapter 26 and verse 17 says, Getting involved in an argument that is none of your business, it's like going down the street and grabbing a dog by its ears. So my beloved, strive for peace with all men. Don't meddle into someone else's business. My beloved, if we love our neighbor as ourselves, we will fulfill the golden law of God, to love one another as we love ourselves. My beloved, do you get easily angered with others? Are you one of those types that want everything to go your way or you get angry? Well, my beloved, you can change your life around through prayer and the reading of the Word of God. Strive for peace, my beloved, and in the long run, you will achieve it. Allow your heart to demonstrate the things of Jesus Christ, who loved even his enemies as they were crucifying him. My beloved, if Jesus was able to forgive those that were murdering him on Calvary, you should be able to forgive others that say bad things about you or come against you. So think, my beloved, before you speak, and you will not hurt others. Remember, people may hurt you, but that doesn't mean that you must retaliate, but show love to your enemies and do good to those that despitefully use you, okay? My beloved, if you have never received Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord and would like to do this today, I want to lead you in a prayer. This is a prayer of repentance, a prayer that guarantees you salvation which means that you will be saved from the judgment of God and will be declared innocent when you leave this life. You must believe that Jesus Christ is the Savior of all mankind, and only through him can you get to heaven. That he was crucified, died, buried, rose from the dead on the third day, and ascended into heaven, is not sitting at the right hand of God the Father, in the place of all power and all majesty, from where he shall come to judge the dead and the living. If you would like to do this today, please, won't you pray this prayer with me and mean it from your heart? Father God, in Jesus' name, I come before you as a sinner. I am sorry for my sins. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Savior of all mankind and that only through him can I get to heaven. I believe that he was crucified, died, buried, rose from the dead on the third day, ascended into heaven, and is now sitting at the right hand of God the Father in the place of all power and all majesty from where he shall come to judge the dead and the living. I believe this today and I declare it today in the name of Jesus Christ, my Savior and Lord. Thank you, Father God, for saving me today. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. My beloved, if you said that prayer and truly repented and meant it from your heart, let me be the first to welcome you into the kingdom of God. Now, what I would like you to do is go to a Bible preaching teaching church. Get an audience with a pastor. Tell him what happened. Ask him to pray with you, to pray for you, to anoint you with oil, and to baptize you in water by full immersion in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Ask him to mentor you, to give you a Bible if you haven't one. And then what I would like you to do is contact me at abundant.grace at att.net. Thank you for listening to our message today titled, Maintaining Peace with with one another. This is part one of the message series. Stay tuned next week for part two and the conclusion of the message series. God bless you, my beloved, and go with God.